Hello, my name's Andy. Uh, this is Richard. Hi. Um, we're at um, Llama Farm Studios, which is a uh, kind of a place for uh, a rest home for vintage synths. Um, yeah, and this is where we work. So, how did you guys meet and how did you end up working together? Well, we met through a friend, didn't we? Yeah, a friend of a friend says, I know somebody's got uh, a synthesizer collection, synthesizer collection, and uh, you know, he's a collector. And you should meet really, and uh, that's how that's how it happened. We kind of met, and um, yeah, I couldn't believe we were only uh, about ten minutes yeah, away from each other. Exactly, yeah. Well, it's eight minutes from my house to here, and uh, Richard's basically a collector. And I, I'm probably more of a player, and um, we decided to kind of start this kind of company uh, in this place called Lum Farm, and uh, that's that's what we're doing really, kind of a synthesizer resource. And you've been working on it here. Yeah, yeah, I've been doing Emperor Machine here and uh, just recording the stuff, really. It's, it's almost finished. There's a lot of uh, treatment to do on the walls, um, but everything's kind of working. There's a polymog isn't working, but that's probably the only thing. Just the electronic drums, that's the only thing we've got yeah, to Yeah, oh yeah, the Simmons drums so, need to be sorted. But um, It's getting there. Yeah, it's good. And why did you start clacking in the first place? Um, well, the first synth I got was in 1980, and it was an SH09, Roland SH09, when it was brand new. Um, and then I picked up a Digisound modular after that. Um, and I guess the mid 80s I started collecting synths because I was interested in modular synths and you know, off the wall synthesis, really. So that's how it all started. Are you using building the collection? Yeah, it just sort of escalated. I mean, some I bought as investments, you know, because it was at the right time. Um, others I bought because I've you know, always wanted one like the System 700. I mean, that's, you know, that's something I always wanted. That's your favourite? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Which is your favourite idea? All of them. <laughs> yeah, I like the cheapest one. No, I don't. I, they've all got probably the RMI. I would have thought, just for the quirky sequencer on it. Um, but you know, a favourite synth is probably whatever track you're working on. It fits best, really. They've all got a, a good job to do. But um, yeah, no particular favourite. Yeah, they've all got the strong points, haven't they? Yeah. Their own characters. So, um, so. Sometimes you need something quickly, like the module is just no good. If you want to, you know, you need a riff or a sound, it just takes too long for me. Um, but, yeah, so, main mono synths I'm a, a real fan of. Yeah. And some of your kits here as well, aren't you? Yeah, yeah bits, the VCS3, there's an um, MPC over there and some stuff at home. But I'm going to kind of move some, some more stuff in um, eventually, but it's... Trying to do that in between making an album and remixing this is a bit difficult at the moment. But um, yeah, no, I spend, I would probably say about two, three times a week up here doing, bringing stuff, overdubbing stuff and taking it home and then mixing it home until the treatment's done in that side of the room that I'll be mixing here. So I reckon I'll probably be in by the summer completely. Yeah. Um, and will you be offering this out as high to the public? Only by invite, yeah. Yeah. That's the plan. Yeah. It's, it's not really a commercial setup, but if somebody wants to come, we can invite them and they can kind of uh, come and play and I'll be the engineer. And um, yeah. So well, you manage your ways. Yeah, you can come if you like, you can come. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're thinking of it more as a synthesizer resource than a studio, aren't we? That's yeah. That's the idea. Yeah. Just a collection of synths that, yeah. you know. I mean, you'd probably only need to come for a couple of days. There's, there's a bedroom here you can sleep and, um, you know, come and record stuff. And the new Emperor Machine stuff is all going to be very yeah. similar soon. Yeah, it's all, uh, the new album's all wrote, been written here and the vocals have been recorded here. Uh, I've just got to overdub some stuff and um, it should be finished by April, early May maybe. Uh, but yeah, no, it's all done here. So it's, it's just, it's a nicer place to work, really, it's good. Is there a release date for Um. Yeah, but if I said it, it'd probably be, it'd probably change. <laughs> I think, yeah, summer, all being well. It's, um, it's probably, j it's just mainly mixing and arranging at the moment. I want something the overdubs, but I just, I'm not really, a, I get bored of mixing. Because I think when you keep mixing something, you, you tend to get bored of the track and you think, oh, what was it I liked again about the track? But, um, yeah, so I'm trying to do it quickly without, without rushing it. Yeah. Uh, this is the two voice. This is, um, yeah, it's just quality really. I think you, you can get almost 
any sound that you want, um, you know, from bass drums to hats to kind of uh, run, running sequences and things, you know, it's really, it's really quick and easy to use. And uh, yeah, it's great. Where did you, you get it from? Uh, Ian Stanley. It's right. Did a bit of a deal with him, had two of the System 100Ms and that, and an expander module. Right. So, yeah, that's good. And then um, probably I would have thought the, um, the ARP is just like, you know, I think it's just one of those synths that you can just, again, get most sounds. It's kind of really versatile. Mm -hmm. You can get pretty much what you want from, from, from this as well as that, really. I think these two are, are kind of nice to work together next to each other. They're, they're kind of quick to operate, you know, whereas if you kind of go around here, you know you're going to be spending a bit more time plugging stuff in, and sometimes time time's a bit of a problem if you're on a remix deadline or, a, or whatever. But um, I would have thought this area is probably the, the most active area. And then there's the VCS3, which is just, well, it's just kind of great for, for most stuff, really. And then, you know, you, you kind of move on to the 700, which is just, uh, which is just amazing, really. You can kind of get whatever you want, but you've got to be prepared to kind of spend some time messing with it and, um, you know, kind of working on it. Yeah, it's just got the filters are fantastic on this. I tend to kind of um, run a sequence and then just, as like I said, saying earlier, as if like you know when you're DJing or mixing, I just kind of keep a a hand on the clock rate and sync it to a drum beat and sometimes it goes off and sometimes it's nice um, you know you can kind of lock it up and not use the sequencer but just use the other bit but um, it's only actually got the one sequencer working as well yeah at the moment. I think when we get that's the other one going, going it's going to be yeah uh, most of it works as well there's a, there's a couple of modules that are kind of faulty which one is it it's the um, the phase shift yeah the phase shift is kind of packed in but you know we don't need a phase shifter really <laughs> It's, I think it's because it seems when you, when you compare the sounds, the, the 100M always seems to be thinner compared to the 700. It's, I don't know what it is. I know the, the System 100. It's the sound, filters, I think. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, it sounds more like the 700. But um, yeah, I think everything's there apart from the sequencer. Yeah. It? Yeah, but you don't really need the sequencer, I suppose. But um, it's nicer. I think uh, I haven't really used this that much yet. I've kind of been mainly working on that and um, the RMI and, and the, these pair, but um, oh, I'm going to do a ha an album just with this, I think, and then that'll be, then, then I'll kind of get into it and get to know it and find out what the dodgy pots are, because I think there's some that a bit crackly, that uh, it kind of needs a bit of it needs a service, but it's, but that kind of adds to it in a way, I suppose. It's, uh, it's just usage, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. Time to play these things as well, I mean, it's not a simple, yeah, simple system to patch together, is it? And why is it that you want to do an album with this, for example? Because it's not a very conventional thing to do in modern times to go back and make a full album. Is it to do with limitations? Um, yeah, and just just kind of seeing what you can get from it. Really, it's um, it's just one of those things that, that 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 it's it's more of a need to do it. It's something I've got to do. I've, I've got to do that. You know, I have to do it. And I think um, it's in me that. Uh, that the more once I get into doing an album with it, I think I'm really going to know it, and then I'll probably go to it more. Um, but at the moment, I mean, probably people disagree, but sometimes it just seems to sound a bit, a bit thin sometimes for me, and it just doesn't. The, the times I've gone to it for a sound, 
it hasn't made it happen for me. I'm thinking, is that because I don't really play with it that much? Is that because I've not found its quirkiness? So I've always kind of gone somewhere else with it, uh, really. But um, yeah, so it, I need to do that to kind of get into it and, and learn, uh, you know, what it what it what it should sound like. And um, yeah, I think that's the only way. But you know, I think uh, doing an album on it, I think would be great. Just kind of probably take it away from there and just maybe put it somewhere else and just just sit with it and just do it and uh, just make a load of bass drums. I'll probably use the MPC and just kind of do it that way with an MPC rather than a computer and kind of get it regimenting, regimented sounding. I think that that would be the plan. That would be, ju yeah, just an album on that and then I'll do other monophonic albums, uh, volume two, with some of the other stuff and um, yeah, keep it all working really and uh, yeah. So is it important to you for people to there are fans of yours to keep hearing all the man stuff and do you want to get those sounds out there as a part of like yeah, it's, archive in way? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, when I'm kind of old, I, w I want to know that I've made a, t a track just just with the, a certain synth or, you know, I don't I don't want to be here and think, well, you know, I've never played on that because it would be a waste. You, you may as well sell it if you're not going to use it. And I think um, there's probably people that, that have got these and just um, you know, really know and use it a lot and stuff. But um, as I say, the times I've gone to, it's not been for me, but it needs to be done. I think um, it's there. It's just, it's, it's just got to be recorded. <laughs> it's just a project. And I think, you know, and I think it's, it's reinventing yourself as well and making things, uh, getting excited by something and knowing that you spent a, kind of a day trying to make something. And then at the end of it, it's like, oh, it's great. It's, it's a real achievement. Uh, whereas, as you know, like a mono synth, you can get a riff really quickly. Um, you know, just just kind of um, mix it in with that and for other things. And uh, yeah, that's kind of this area. And this is kind of where I usually set, set a laptop up and sit and record. And then. Um, and that's when Logic. Yeah, yeah, Logic Logic Nine, and just that's probably the best way. And I've got like a just an Apogee um, duet there, which is. Uh, Again, which is which is nice, and does the job really. It's just ni a nice sound to it. And do you use the dope fruits at all? Um, eventually, no. I think that no, they've just kind of <laughs> recently gone into the rack. But yeah, no, it will get used. I think more the summer when the studio's finished, it'll kind of um, everything will come into its own. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's enough sequences knocking about to kind of not want to use them yet, really. You know. But, uh, yeah, the Max 16 is pretty straightforward, but the shunk works quite a steep learning curve on that. Yeah, it's quite a complex bit of kit. But you know, I think that the 700 sequencer is just it just does it does it all really. I think you you probably wouldn't need those, but uh, he's collected them so. <laughs> this is the profit. Um, this is this is great. Unfortunately, this this one doesn't work at the moment. Uh, there's there's a problem with the. Uh, I think the power supply is getting too hot, and uh, also the output is just just doesn't seem to be working. But when it works, this is great for pads, and I use this quite a lot. Um, I quite often take it from here and go and sit down with it, because you just can't you can't really play it like that. You get a neck ache. Um, so yeah, that's great. The the 202 is just really good for just strings. Well, obviously it is a strings machine, but um, it's just got a real dark, kind of morbid, almost Black Sabbath feel about some when you go really low with, with the sounds, uh, which is what I'm really into. So I use that quite a lot. Uh, then at the bottom, this is uh, the VP330, which is, uh, which is just really good. Uh, you know, classic vocoder sound. Um, but, and, and I think, um, I won't talk through that. The, uh, the kind of sounds on it are really nice when you use the Traveller. Sorry, not the Traveller, I'm thinking of a Korg. The, um, the pitch shift. If you just, when you bend it up. I love that, I think that's really nice. Uh, I think that's probably, uh, I think that's probably my favorite bit is the, uh, is the, is the pitch shift, which is really cool. Um, Juno 60, which is just, uh, this is probably left when I was, I've been making bass drums on this, 
which is uh, it's just a really quick way to make uh, the quickest synth I think to make a bass drum on. Uh, and then you know you can kind of uh, just kind of get it going. And uh, I think everybody knows what a Juno does. Uh, and the Omni, well, this is just it's just. This is quite a haunting synth. I think um, it's if you're kind of doing some soundtrack stuff, um, most Emperor Machine stuff, I kind of like like to use this synth. It kind of just creates a vibe, and quite often I use it to make to make the sounds, and then um, and then I'll delete it. I won't record it. I won't use it in the mix, so to speak. But it just helps create an atmosphere, which sometimes you need when you're trying to get a certain track or a certain rhythm or something. You need to kind of get a dark feel going. But then you just delete it after, otherwise it'd just be too dark. Um, and then this, so you know, which is just again another strings machine, which you know when you start kind of playing all these together with with the 202, which is slightly out of tune, uh, you can kind of get a really nice complex set of sounds. Okay, this is um, this is the RMI um, harmonic synthesizer, which is just it's great. Uh, and how many is there? Is there only 50? Is there? Is that a lie? Less than 200, mate, oh, less than 200. I think uh, I don't know how many are in this country, but this is this was a real find, and it's it's really uh, inspirational. It's got this great little sequencer on it that's um, you can either kind of have it stepping up, or it can go random. It's going random now. There you go. Oh, it kind of goes random. But you just basically start bringing in the harmonics in. got two sides of it. So it's going to be. This is, um, I've probably, I've not recorded, well, no, I've recorded it once, but, um, this is one of those synths you kind of end up sitting playing at and not recording. You just think, oh God, I should have recorded that. And you think, oh, what's the time? You just, as soon as you start kind of getting into all the harmonics and uh, playing with the, uh, the tremulant control, uh, which, is, which is great, um, you kind of, uh, you can get really into it. And I think, uh, I think I'm really lucky to be able to sit and play on, on this, especially this. This is great. Even uh, the guitarist who plays for Emperor Machine kind of, he sees it as his synth. He he sits and plays on this and, and wants to play it if ever it needs playing. It's that um, it's that addictive, and you know it's just a basic sequencer which is just uh, which is just it's it's really good fun and it's simple. This is another corner of the studio. Um, this is a nice little corner because you've got an MPC here which is uh, which is great, and um, you have got the Mini Moog which is um, which is great. Everything's great, and it's just. A, I think everybody knows, you know, what this machine's capable of. It's just fantastic. This one's kind of special because it's uh, some of the notes bend. It's, if we can go, they kind of uh, did you hear it then? You got the tracking's going on the keyboard, but sometimes when you play it, it's really interesting because uh, you know if you, you can get a fluke where it will bend and it will track up to the note you're going to next, which has happened a few times. So um, it doesn't really need to be fixed and cleaned just yet. So that, that's good. Uh, and you've got the polymog at the bottom, uh, but uh, this one's not working. It came back from being repaired, and um, it's, uh, it's just not working, which is a shame. But you know, we've, we've got another one of these uh, that does work. And I think if you really want to get that kind of yellow magic sound, uh, or if you want to go visage, but we don't want to go there, um, you can kind of, uh, it's, it's good for that. Um, and now the MPC is, is, is what I use a lot for, I kind of take it around the studio and uh, if I'm making drums on the synths, I'll always use the MPC because, uh, you know, and kind of fill the pads up with kicks and snares that I'll make off the synths and stuff. But um, yeah, that's, uh, this, is, this is really important. This, this is a kind of use, you know, in the early Bizarre Ink days, uh, I use this uh, on the new Emperor Machine album. I've used this on Chicken Lips stuff. Uh, and other projects that I've got going on, I've used it just just this machine. 
uh, you know, and I, and I still quite often use just floppies, uh, which is slow, but uh, I don't know, it's just, uh, you just, you just, just do, don't you? You just kind of go with it, what it was supposed to do, really, because the, the kind of zip drives that I've used with it have failed, and uh, I've got a whole library and it's just failed, so the thing that hasn't failed has been, has been the floppy, um, so that's good. This is the, uh, the multi Moog. <clears throat> I've not kind of, um, I've not recorded this a lot. I've, I've played with it a lot, but I've not kind of, uh, it's one of those synths where I've enjoyed playing it more than, than I've recorded it. Um, but it's fantastic, you know, especially, you know, the same as the poly, you've got the kind of ribbon control on it, which is, oh, I really love that. But you just kind of, uh, I like to kind of create a load of notes, record separate notes and just kind of bend them all up and, and kind of, you know, 10 to two pan them and do stuff like that with it. So that's good fun. Um, the PPG, the PPG is, we've just got back from the Menders, it's been fixed. And uh, there's also the, the wave term, which is kind of, uh, which works when it wants to. And uh, we kind of seem to get lost in that at the minute. Um, but yeah, no, this is great. Just to kind of make those real hybrid sounds, that kind of um, digital analog mixture, which is, uh, which is really unique really. I think this, this keyboard finds its place in a track quite easily. It, um, you know, when we used it before it broke and got it back again. It, um, it seems to sit in. It's a bit like when you play live, uh, when you're gigging live, the Moogs always seem to kind of cut through a mix when you've got a guitarist playing and a drummer's going on. If you've got, if you've got any kind of Moog, it works. And I think it's the same with the, with the PPG. If you, want, you feel that there's something that's lacking, even if it's just some kind of pad or something, you know, this, this seems to kind of fit in. So it's kind of good for that. Uh, really. Um, so yeah, th this is a winner. And I think once we really get to terms with the wave term, terms of the wave term, I think uh, uh, it's going to be even more of a stunner. So um, yeah, that's, that's those. We're lucky to have a, a Series 3 here in the studio. And um, everybody says, oh yeah, it doesn't matter, I've got Fairlight sounds, you know, I've got, I've got bootlegs and I've got my Fairlight phone app. But it's, I think it's not until you get in front of the real thing where you kind of see what it's about really. The kind of the graininess of the sound. Uh, you know, it takes a while to load up the sounds, but um, it's fantastic. We have, we have, we've not used it yet. It's gonna be on the, when I do the overdubbing, we're gonna kind of use it. But um, it's just, it's just real dirty sampling. It's great, it's really good. So uh, yeah, no, I'd go through the sounds, but it'll take a while to kind of load them all up. Um, so I don't think I'll bother. I might perhaps change one and do it on the fly. F5, is it? Yeah. Uh, see, it's still loading. It's loading the snare sound. Snare Sam D01. There you go. So, there you go. A nice vintage sampler quality. And it works too. So this, this will get used a lot. It'd be great to kind of sample into it and um, really incorporate it into the new stuff, but we'll see how much time we've got. This is this is um, the kind of the other side of the studio, which is uh, which is I would say still being built. The, the whole room needs to be treated. Uh, there's going to be like a doorway built in there, uh, like uh, some kind of double glazing doorway. Um, so most of the stuff in here is kind of is, is a lot newer than, than down the down the other side of things. So. If you feel like in a bit of a 90s mood, maybe, <laughs> you can come over to the side. There's some stuff from um, Liz Parker here that she used, uh, which Richard b bought. There's also um, Gary Newman's signature here. Uh, this was bought for charity, um, so that's interesting. The desk, uh, which is poorly. Uh, there's a software problem at the moment with this desk, which is really annoying. Uh, so we've got, we've got the, um, the NS40s which are, are quite a mad sound, really. They're, they almost se seem like in your face, but they're, they're really like um, quite revealing, I think. So I'm not sure what the crossover is, the way it all works with them compared to the NS10s, but you know, it's really good. And then the Mackies, which is just bass power, really. So they, they, they kind of do the job for that. Um, uh, there's a couple of things down there, more rack stuff, which we've kind of seen. And then uh, over this way is the kind of Elka. Uh, which we kind of move when we need to use it. We just kind of shift this out of the way. 
And um, Michelle liked to play on this quite a lot. Um, she, she, she was quite good on this keyboard. But you know, this, the, on this you've got the drum machines and you've got that kind of jar sound, the strings, which is just brilliant. And uh, you know, you can't have a studio without the classic M1 piano in it, which is, uh, which is perfect. And then there's the, uh, the Super JX, which is just, um, which gets used on most things really, which we kind of, you know, we've got the programmer for it. And uh, I'm probably waffling a bit now, but the, the piano, which is nice to sit and play at piano. So this side of the room is a lot more calming than the other side of the room. If you kind of just want to kind of write stuff and it's going to be more MIDI based. There's, there's so much stuff that we need to kind of to wire in yet. So you'll have to come back when it's all finished. So. Uh,